Hey, what's up guys? It's Tobin. Uh, last month I think I told you that we would take a look at the new Geo Portal because I should have it done. That didn't happen. So we're going to look at something a little different. One of the things I wanted to do with the new site, since it allows you to embed essentially the mapping part of it in other sites, could get a lot more traffic. And right now I'm using a little PHP script that I found and customized to serve up MB tiles from those little SQLite databases. PHP is really not the right tool for that. I get away with that because, you know, we're just a county. We, is small data a thing? We do small data. But it's really not the right tool. It's really not going to scale well for that kind of uh, real-timey uh, every time a page loads, it's going to make, you know, maybe half a dozen to a dozen requests to that service. And that's going to bog PHP down. It's going to run out of resources eventually. So I went looking around for a replacement in Node. Because Node is an ideal tool for that kind of activity. It's, you know, event-driven, super fast, real-timey, you know, as many concurrent stuff as you can throw at you will probably saturate your bandwidth before you kill Node. So, I went looking around and I found uh, Chris Helms, Chelm, on GitHub had a really neat one that is super tiny. Um, and it's just uh, very, very nice. Now, I wanted to do some different things with it. Uh, because of uh, different things we do and plus we're on Windows and uh, yeah there's that we're on Windows so it's gonna run on a Windows server and it might need to have little tweaks here and there so I made a fork of it uh, I gave him some gave him uh, one pull request to, to kind of patch change one thing but I made a different version of it that's a bit shorter and here's what it looks like. I'll put links to all this in the in the blog post. You pull this up in Sublime Text 3, which is really, really fast. This is the entire tile server. Um, this is how awesome Node is. It's very, very brief. It's pretty much exactly what Chris had. Uh, a couple tweaks I made is I made you could have the tiles in a different directory as a server script. Uh, you're passing the name of the MB tiles file as part of the route so the server can serve more than one tile set. And it's using, like it's using a, a path join rather than hard coding in the path because Windows puts its slashes in a different direction, which Windows. So it's a tiny bit different, but it's mostly the same. And let's take a look how, let's just go over this. Express is a, a JavaScript, or it's a node kind of framework. All we're really using it for is to capture the route that it's going. MB tiles is an MB tiles uh, node plugin for dealing with MB tiles. It's really just a SQLite database. You could actually just send a SQLite query to it. But tiles gives us this uh, get tile request that takes care of that for us. And we're just loading paths so it can do some directory joining. This underscore underscore dir name in node just means get the current directory of the script that's running. Uh, here I'm loading tiles from a different place. We're doing app.get, and this is express, and we're taking each one of those past arguments and loading it as a, a letter. You got your y x z for the tiles, and s is going to be your tile source. So when you make a request, it's going to look kind of like this, where it's the name of your tile set minus the dot mb tiles extension, y x z with png tacked on the end. So it's going to get those, make a new MB tiles request to that directory to that MB tiles folder. If it can't connect to the MB tiles database, it'll fling out this error here. 
If it can, if it can't open this database, it'll do our get tile with our Z, X, and Y, and then it'll pass back either an error we couldn't get a tile or the actual image. And then it says, uh, then it just starts listening on port 3000, which you can then proxy from Apache or can you proxy from IIS? You used to not be able to. Maybe you can now. I've used IIS and so on. But anyway, you'll just proxy to that and it'll go right up port 80 if your firewall folks don't want you to open up port 3000 and they probably won't. So that is the entire, entire server. That is the whole thing serving out the base map images. And you can just start that up. Let's launch a bust out a terminal. We'll go to where I have this stuff set. Make this a little bigger. See what I'm doing. And we'll just start it with node server.js. I'll say it's listening on port 3000. We just console.log that here. So now with that map request, we'll just pull up this is actually the new geo portal that's in development. So we'll just pull that up and it, it's node is serving up our tiles and it is screaming. You can see it's, it's as fast as you can go. It will fling that stuff out at you. So we've got our entire tile server set up in like this tiny little bit of code. Big thanks to, uh, you know, Chris. So we've got that and it's ready to go. We're ready to ser serve that up. Now in Windows, what I did in the fork is I included a couple of scripts that, so you could install that as a service. There's this really, um, node Windows. there's this really good node windows, node extension that lets you do things like install and remove services with the node process. It's not only just installs a service, it does it in a smart way. So the, it makes a little daemon.exe, which is probably what the service points to, and it handles its own failure and restarting of the application, which you can configure. So it's really, really neat. So if we're on Windows, we could just put in uh, node windows install service Make sure this is pointing to where your service is or your server.js is. And it will make a new service called node MB tile server and start it. And there's a separate little script. You can go node remove windows remove service and it will remove that service. So add it as a service. It's node running on windows, super fast serving out your tiles. Boom, done, tile server. Um, all it does is serve images. If you want to do like wax and stuff, you might need to look elsewhere. The, the uh, tile mill folks have their own node-based tile server, um, which is very, very good and does all that extra stuff. But it, from their install instructions, it's not uh, tested on Windows and Windows, really. So there's the tile server. Um, that's really all I wanted to tell you. I'll put links to all that. I guess since I have the new, what I'm working on the geo portal right now, I'll just kind of show you briefly what that does. You can see, uh, um, here's the old site. Uh, this is probably like Brian Timoney's nightmare. And here is the new site. Now it does 90% of what the old site does, but when you first come up on this, it's going to look just like this. And uh, it's going to say, you know, what the hell are you looking for? You'll put an address or whatever, it'll go to it. Then it'll say, what NW2F do you want to know about this? And you know, it's kind of flashes it a couple times. That's not a blink tag, uh, you know, it'll only do it a couple times. That was just one of those things where you throw it in because it's cool and no one else really knows it's there. So you say you want to know about parks, it'll go and make that report about parks and then you can go to it and it'll link to directions and back to Google Maps. 
What I think I'm going to do is the old GeoPortal, I'm going to strip all this stuff out and just call this a data browser. So that's really what it's become. So you will be able to link from the new site to the old site and pull up whatever address you're looking at and then add all those overlay layers and oblique photography and all that bullshit only 1% of the people really wants to see. And this is also going to have uh, where you can essentially embed this and you'll be able to pick out what exactly include a search box or not. I'm also going to put in do you want the map interactive. Maybe you just want to show a location like it is a page for a specific park. You might just want to pull up the map and show where that park is and not let them do anything else. You know what do you want to know about it? You could not want to know anything. This is essentially that what are you looking what do you want to know box and what size you want it, it'll make your embed code, and it'll go off and do its thing. And there'll be this embed.html in the same folder that uh, shares like 99% of the same code. The only difference will be is the this area will be above the map, and instead of going over here with this uh, what do you want to know? It's going to put it right in the bubble. So it'll all be one thing. And you won't have weird scrolling in your iframe. That's kind of the plan. It's not ready yet. I haven't done the embed part other than the pop-up. And I've got quite a few number of WTF you want to knows to go. But it's getting there. Next month. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, thanks again to uh, uh, Chris Chelm. Christopher Helm. Ha, <laughs> may not even want to be called Chris, I don't know. But big thanks to him for this script. And uh, it was a big help. And now I've got a tile server that will handle as much as I can possibly throw at it. I'll see you guys next month. Bye-bye.